Next up here we have the filter gallery. Now this contains visual tools for working with a lot of the filters down here in the filter list. For instance, all of the artistic filters are in the filter gallery. We'll take a look at that. Click on filter gallery. Now this is a real nice way to work. I'm going to get rid of just some of these filters here that we had applied last time. The nice thing about this is you can open up one of these sections and you can see here it works with the artistic, brush strokes, distort, sketch, stylize, and texture filters. Most of the filters inside of these sections are included. Simply look up here, look at the thumbnails, get an idea of what you want to use. There's rough pastel for instance. See so just kind of a visual idea. Choose one you want to work on and then, then you can come over here and adjust that. Now when you're in here you can actually move the image around just like this. You can zoom in and zoom out. So you see the whole picture in here or zoom into a closer view. There we go. Also can scroll back and forth using these scroll bars in here. Or choose a particular zoom level right down there from these zoom controls. On the right hand side in here we can have, we'll have adjustments in here for the different filters depending upon which filter it is you'll have different adjustments. On this one I can increase the stroke length or decrease the stroke length, increase the highlight area or decrease that. That's a little nicer image here that highlight increased. You can change the intensity values right here. This shows you which filter you're working on. This is the smudge stick filter. Or if you click on the down arrow right there, this gives you all of the filters in all of this whole section over here on the left hand side. All of these filters are included in this drop down list. The drop down list has the filters in alphabetical order. The side over here has the filters organized the way they are in the filter menu. So if you're used to this and you want to use the thumbnails, this is the best way to do it. If you are, if you know which filter you want to use, then just go over here to the alphabetical list and find the filter in the alphabetical list. Fastest way in that instance. That's the only difference between this list and this set over here. Let's come down here to something else. Let's do a water paper. There we go. Conti Crayon. It's a black and white filter, but what I wanted to show you is that the options over here will change depending upon what's available for use in that particular filter. In this one we can adjust the canvas different or different textures. Brick, burlap, canvas, and sandstone. You'll see this kind of a thing in several of these. Little pop-out menu here. You actually can load a different texture if you have one available. And on this one we also can adjust the lighting. Bottom, bottom, left, left, top, left, and right, and so forth. If you are working with something that has a texture, you will also see a lighting option. Looking at the top, let me just put this to bottom left. So the lighting angle changes. Let's set this to a brick look. There's kind of a brick look in there. And let's do top right on the brick. Bottom right. So changing the lighting changes the lighting on the actual texture. So lighting controls the texture. Let's look at just a couple, couple more of these in here. And again, notice how these options change depending upon which tool you're using and different tools will have different options such as the pattern type. Now we'll be coming back to all of these and looking at all of these in the regular menu and each time we go to the regular filter menu if that filter is included in the filter gallery the filter gallery will pop up so we'll be demonstrating those here in the filter gallery as we come to them. One last thing about the filter gallery here, let's just go back to something else here, is that you can apply more than one filter very easily. Right now we're looking at just one filter. I can hide it or show it right there and see what the effect is. If I want to bring in another filter, just click on this new button, just like making a new layer, I then can bring in a new filter. I can now look at it with or without the cutout, with or without the plastic wrap and I can change the sequence that these are applied, either top to bottom or bottom to top. You notice there's a slight difference in the look depending upon which is applied first. Change that to a watercolor and plastic wrap. The one that is gray is the one you're currently working on. Easy to check, just look up here and you'll see which one you're working on at the moment. Let's do a neon glow 
Fresco, just kind of going through some of these things and seeing what we have. That's kind of interesting. Poster edges and watercolor. We bring our intensity up a little bit. Edge thickness change a little bit. So there we go. That is working with the filter gallery. And again, we'll be seeing more of this as we move forward in our discussions. I'm going to change this back to just one filter in here for the rest of our training. I'll click on cancel on that one. And there we go. And again, the filter gallery right there. And it automatically comes up with a lot of the filters in here in our drop down list. A lot of the rest of the filters will have their own little dialog boxes that will pop up. And you'll see some very old style boxes with, with real minimal controls and some more advanced dialog boxes with some visual controls in them. It depends upon when the filter was first added into Photoshop.